Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the Cosmic Climate for the week of March 27th through April 2nd. So we're almost into April, which is great. And we have officially made it through the major transitions of this year. And we've all been anticipating it. Everyone's been talking about it. And we have finally stepped into this new year, new beginning, and just really fresh, powerful energy. And even though it is fresh and new, it definitely brings its um, challenges. And so the transitions that I am talking about are um, Saturn entering Pisces, Pluto entering Aquarius, and uh, Mars entering Cancer. So Saturn cycles tend to be about two to three years. And um, Pluto actually was in Capricorn, um, had been in Capricorn since 2008, and it just entered Aquarius. And then it's going to retrograde and make its way back into, into Capricorn here the second half of the year just to kind of finalize and complete officially complete that cycle that began back in 2008. Mars tends to stay in a sign for about like two months or so. Um, however, it had its retrograde period last year into this year. And so it has been, it was in Gemini for a little over seven months. So that was a long period of time. We all have been talking about that as well and feeling that. So I'm very curious to hear where you are on the other side of this threshold. Again, I had been speaking about us moving through the birth canal and kind of being in the in-between space. And now essentially I would say we're on the other side. We had the new moon in Aries, we had the equinox. And so we are in this energy of rising, of being birth and really embodying this um, new evolved, you know, aspect of ourselves. And essentially I would say higher aspect of ourselves who we've been striving to become. And of course there are layers to that. It can be complicated, but this is the beginning of this new essence, this higher vibration of you and your desires and how you move forward into this next cycle of your life. And so, um, yeah, where I am at this point is I have been going deeper with my astrology practice. As you all have been seeing, I've been circling back to the astronomy aspect of things and really actually integrating the astrology and astronomy. So really, um, you know, stay tuned for that. And it's interesting because my journey began with the integration of astronomy and astrology, but not necessarily formally trained. And then I ended up in Colorado um, studying astronomy in college. Then as soon as I graduated, I got back into astrology and started diving deep and it got my formal training there at that point. And now I'm coming back to officially integrating the two. So I'm really excited about that. And in addition to that, I'm really honoring the additional creative gifts that I have, which involve channeling and dare I say mediumship. That's a whole other thing, but really activating um, the energy centers is what I'm really focusing on. So really balancing out those chakra centers and opening up those channels to be in a state of union or in balance, of course, as much as possible. We're all human. So um, there, that's also complicated, but that's where I am now. And I'm working with um, a few um, priestesses that, I, I mean, they just resonate with me as priestess priestesses. And so we're working together and I am guiding them with doing the same thing. So this is really exciting because I love this type of practice. So I'm integrating all the things. So definitely stay tuned because I'm going to be sharing some videos on just energy work, I guess you say, energy healing, protecting your energy field, um, just different practices. If you are someone who is really opening up your psychic abilities and your channeling abilities and all of that. So I'm curious to hear where you are at this point. So here we are into this new cycle, into this fresh energy. And we are beginning this week with the moon approaching her first quarter phase in Cancer. And so that first quarter phase usually comes through as a crisis in action. Like there's some sort of hesitation to really move forward with that new intention that you set during that new moon time or to really um, just 
allow yourself to be free and expand because with that crisis in action, it is you're up against an edge in your desires or in your movement towards those desires. So I want to reflect back on the previous week, which was the week of the equinox. That was a really powerful week. We had Pluto transition into Aquarius. We had, that's when Mars also entered Cancer. And what I really want to look at is Venus's um, conjunction with the waxing moon. And I'm trying to find that on my notes. Um, oh, why I'm looking at this week. I'm like, that's uh, the moon with Mercury. No. So here we go. Um, that was on Friday, March 24th. Venus had her meeting with the waxing moon in Taurus. So that's a very strong Venus and that's a very strong moon, right? And so with Venus's meetings with the moons, it indicates a moving past a, a gate or a threshold that corresponds to the, the seven chakras. And this is essentially a practice that corresponds or that works in alignment with Venus's cycle, synodic cycle, so her meetings with the sun. And therefore, and then we, so that's the overall cycle, but then we integrate the moon connections, the, the union with Venus and the moon, which happens once a month. And that either indicates Venus gaining her power back in correspondent to the chakra points or her releasing power or releasing actually not necessarily power, but releasing blocks, like clearing the blocks within that particular energy center or chakra point, right? And really you get both, right? Again, this play on duality, light, dark, you know, gain, release. So even if you are releasing, you're going to gain some of that power back. And in order to gain that power back, you have to release. So it really works again, just like this play yin yang kind of type energy, which I love. Okay. And so at this point, Venus, this conjunction with the moon in Taurus is focusing on the heart chakra. So we've already gained power back in our crown, our third eye, and our throat, which was the previous cycle, right? So we were gaining that power back. And here we are with the moon and Venus both in Taurus or having the conjunction in Taurus, right? And this was last week, which is really powerful because Venus is in its domicile. She's at, com she's at home. Sorry, you don't. So Venus is in her domicile in Taurus, meaning she's at home. She has all her resources. She has her comfortability. She's very stable, although Uranus is there and that's a whole nother thing, right? Kind of shaking it up. But Venus, she knows how to vibe. She knows how to set the mood and she can work with that, right? She'll find the balance. She'll find that center, that harmony, that, that connection, right? Um, and then we have the moon, there as well and the moon is exalted in Taurus so the moon is loves being in Taurus and so they were sharing that space of comfortability and kind of setting the tone of the feel good vibes in the sh in the the strong i guess you could say container of what is supportive to really have an open heart to really begin to approach life in your relationships in your purpose with compassion but with it in Taurus, there's still this essence of also having some sort of groundedness in that. And by what I mean is a balance of, you know, having boundaries, having some sort of structure. And, you know, there's a balance, of course, like we don't need to, everything doesn't need to be rigid, but again, having that, that solid ground, excuse me. And so I'm feeling that energy coming in through for this week here, as we approach this um, first quarter phase of the moon, which is in, um, which is going to be on March 28th. And so on this same day, this, um, well, no, I'll get to that in a second. Right. So as we're learning how to, um, with this cancer energy, with Venus, um, calling her power back to the heart, we're learning how to embody compassion and how to connect with the other. And this is really important because with the Aries energy, right. And just us as individuals, and then as a collective, it's like, we want our freedom. We want our independence. We want to own who we are. And we really, really want to embody this new essence of who we are 
you know, effectively. We want to do it well and we want to just go for it, right? We want to just act. And, you know, naturally there are people in our lives that can, you know, sort of, some people can dim their shine or, you know, some people might be like, oh no, but you can't do that because they're used to seeing you as the old you and not who you are in this moment, who you have evolved into. And then this can also come out as far as in the collective where we are wanting to innovate, innovate and um, really be the pioneers for what it is that we're creating. And there will be some, you know, kind of pushback on that as well. So how do we hold compassion and, and see the other perspective, but how do we hold our boundaries and hold true to who it is that we are while being compassionate to the other. So I definitely feel that this is this type of first quarter square we're going to experience with, with this cancer energy. So again, there's that concept of balance and with um, just even the glyph of cancer, it looks like 69. And so here we are again with this give and receive type energy, this yin yang. And it really feels like there's a call to balance that um, life force energy, that that energy flow within us so that yeah. we can hold our ground, hold space for ourselves, and then also, you know, be supportive um, or be compassionate with those boundaries and with moving forward, right? And so we also, we have Mars in Cancer. So now the moon will be with Mars. So she um, was with, with Venus last week. Now she's going to be with Mars at a point this week. And so it's interesting because Cancer and Taurus, they are supportive to one another um, as uh, Taurus is uh, the the earth, right? So it can really provide that structure for Cancer. And so their energies work really nicely with each other. And so Venus and Mars are in a supportive connection and then having the moon now in, um, in the space with Mars is really allowing for just the moon is giving that support and assisting and nurturing Mars's desires to act on certain things. And the tricky thing with Mars and Cancer is that there is a strong passion, a strong emotional connection to certain things or to whatever is coming up. And so there's like, I want to act, I want to do this. And then of course, if there is that resistance, there can be a lot of frustration. And so the moon is there to um, is going to be there to nurture and support. And so what I mean by this is the goal here is to act on your hunches, act on your instinct to go for it. Right. And this is, this is going to be supportive in a way of like really strengthening intuition for us here and acting on those, those hunches or yeah, whatever you feel called to act on that but doing it in a way that's balanced for you, that's supportive and grounded, right? And so, you know, that's going to look different for everyone, but that's what's coming through here. And so I do want to share the, um, the Oracle messages for this week. So we have the vessel, which is so perfect. And this is, again, the Taurus energy coming through of having that structure. I also feel like this is just pointing to um, a nice connection that's happening on March 30th between Mars and Saturn. They are, um, Mars and Saturn will make an exact connection of a trine, which is creative, like a creative collaboration. And I like that they're both, these are the malefics, but they're both in water signs. They're both in really kind of tricky places for themselves. But I feel that Saturn in Pisces is definitely beginning to create the structure to really contain that essence of source, the essence of water, the essence of the, the consciousness and how we connect with all of that. And so, <laughs> and Mars, and, and so that's, that structure that Saturn is creating, and it even can be like some type of blueprint, right? That is going to be supportive for Mars being able to act on instincts, act on hunches and intuition so that we can really effectively, you know, live our truth and really begin to manifest and create this within this new cycle, Right. And so it's really what I'm learning with my practices on really it's the psychic workbook, right. That I'm using. What I'm learning is that when you connect to those psychic abilities, right. Your, your Claire, your Claire's, um, you are able to really 
live the best life, right? Because you're directing yourself or you're you're taking action that's in alignment with your divine essence and with the divine. Are you okay, sweetie? What's up? What's wrong with your, you want to bring it here? Sorry, one more second. All right. So yeah, th by acting on our intuition and following our intuition, and I really am feeling that I'm going to shout out um, Alyssa, who we were in a meeting today um, in our symposium. And I think she mentioned this as far as like Mars and cancer and this, the boldness and the courage to um, act on, you know, your ideas or whatever it is you're acting on or stepping into the theme was the shadow that we were chatting about, but really this, what's coming through is really acting on your intuition, having the strength and the courage to follow that, you know, even for just yourself. And, you know, traditionally Mars is considered to be, um, depressed and cancer, um, however, you know, nothing's really black and white. And so it's like, how do you work with that? Like it can be challenging, but there's definitely another side to that, that can be really powerful because those challenges tend to be your greatest strengths, right? So how do you master that and, you know, use that as a, a powerful resource? So then the second, um, Oracle is the crone here which I mean, what speaks to me in this is the crow. Absolutely. Like this is been so very clear and just, you know, and I do like on here, the medallion, it is the, um, the hexagram or the star of David, the six pointed star, which is again, the balance of the divine masculine, the divine feminine, the elements as above, so below as within, so without, and then, you know, that source, that heart. Sorry, one more interruption. So with the crone, essentially, um, there's so much that comes with this um, personally, and I'm sure personally for you too. Um, but definitely this, of course, is, you know, the wise woman, the sage, um, the waning balsamic um, type energy. But what um, really just in relation to what I've been talking about intuition and all of that in the book, that was the main um the main key words here, of course, I lost that page. Where are we? Yeah, so it says magic, clairvoyant, psychic, intuitive, and wise. Um, and so that is something to think about. There was, let's see, I want to see if there was, oh yeah, I did like this too. The crone is a master of letting go and residing in what is. She rejects nothing. The crone is often seen with the crow, smoke, night, and the moon. So what stood out to me is the fact that she's the master of letting go and just being in the moment, but then she rejects nothing. Like she doesn't reject it, right? So there's a give and receive type energy there. So that is what I was picking up with this here, especially that um, hexagram there, which is that balance of energy. And so um, I think I feel pretty good with that. Yeah, the key um, transits for this week is going to be, I didn't really touch on it, but also on the same day that um, the moon reaches its first quarter phase in Cancer, there is a conjunction between Mercury and Jupiter um, in Aries. So we have um, the sun, Mercury, Jupiter, all in Aries. Um, the sun is exalted. I don't think I mentioned that before. The sun is very strong in Aries. So there's a strong um, perspective or focus on the self, right? Um, and I like to say um, selfful, which is um, something my one of my clients, Zephyrine, shout out to Zephyrine, um, likes to say. And so I feel that too. So being selfful, like full of yourself in like the best way. Um, so yeah, but that connection is feels like comprehension and understanding, right? Because Jupiter, um, I don't hear people talk a lot about how Jupiter is really, um, it's that um, comprehension. Sorry, I have my little one really loud and chatty. So I'm trying to comprehend what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so there's the, okay, sweetie, she's going to bed. Um, yeah, so there's that level of comprehension and understanding coming forth. And with Mercury, we know that's that intelligence, that logic and reason. And so 
with Mercury coming into um, union or conjunction with Jupiter feels like, again, with Jupiter wanting to affirm um, the energy, wanting to expand, there's like an af affirmation or maybe there might be communications or information coming through that um, will help us to expand, will affirm your intuition, that will affirm your affirm your hunches, your, your instinct, whatever's coming through. Um, and if you're familiar with tarot, um, this, um, uh, where Mercury and Jupiter are having their meeting, this girl is cracking up. Um, and the second decan of Aries is, uh, corresponds to the three of wands. So that's that there. Um, and I will also say where the moon reaches her first quarter square, in Cancer, that it corresponds to the Two of Cups. I mean, just look, making sure. Yeah, because that's going to happen at, um, yeah, eight degrees of Cancer. And this is right after the moon has her conjunction with Mars. Very cool. So Mercury conjoining with Jupiter, comprehension, understanding, opening, expanding, affirmation, um, a very successful energy exchange I see. And then, um, but also there could be a little bit of challenge with that, that, um, first quarter moon there. And then the next highlight will be the Mar Mars, um, trining Saturn and then Venus having her conjunction with, with Uranus and Taurus. So there's going to be some sort of breakthrough or some release, right? So there could be, um, it can go in two ways because I'm definitely seeing some interaction with relationships, with engaging. So there can be some kind of binding happening within relationships, um, some solidifying and a structure being created, or there can be, you know, a breaking of particular relationships, right? And so, you know, it could go both ways. It could break through. There could be a breakthrough that brings the energies together. And so, um, yeah, this is what I'm picking up on for this week. Thank you, everyone. I hope that was very clear here at the end of what I was getting at <laughs> with all my distractions. But I really appreciate everyone's support here. Thank you for the comments. Again, if you enjoy my content, please share this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to continue to hang out with me. And I'm going to be doing live, you <clears throat> live streams and those astronomy videos and the um, energy type channeling, you know, I don't know why I don't want to say psychic. It's like, I don't know. It's kind of like a taboo word for me, but talking about the clairs and the energy center, chakra centers, healing that and getting it in balance. This is something I'm doing for myself and doing with my clients. And so I am going to be sharing what's coming through there. And if you want to connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can find the links and information of that below in the description of this video. Um, I do mentorships and I do, of course, astrology readings so and tarot readings. So that's all available for you um, there in the description of this video. And I wish you the best for this week and beyond. And I will talk to you all very soon.